we are going to talk about hashing in this video. Hashing is one of the uh, technique that used to improve the efficiency of a search algorithm or lookup operations. And it has other benefits as well and we are going to talk about those also in this video. And we are not just going to talk about the theoretical explanation of the hashing, but we are going to take a simple example and try to understand the underlying purpose of the hashing. Uh, let's get started. Consider this simple example uh, where we have an array which contains a list of employee names. So it basically contains the employee name and the corresponding employee details uh, associated with that. So the employee details could be anything. It could be the performance related details, the contact details of the employee or any other uh, details of the employee. So we have an array uh, which contains the list of employee names and the associated employee details. Now the requirement is you will be given the employee name and you need to find the corresponding employee details from the array. So how do we usually solve this problem? In a typical way, the traditional way to solve this problem is you, you will iterate through the array, you go through each and every item in the array, and then you compare the employee name with the input, and if there's a match, then you return the employee details. That's how we do it, that's the traditional way to solve that problem. But it's not an efficient way to solve this problem, because the time complexity of this particular approach is over n. And O of n is not a very good uh, uh, efficient way of solving this problem because the more number of employees that you will have in the array, the more time it will take to find a particular employee uh, in a worst case scenario. So I have a separate video that talks specifically about the time complexity. And I talked about uh, what is the best time complexity and what is the bad one and how do you calculate the time complexity for a specific uh, operation. So I would highly recommend you to watch that video. Uh, now coming back to our problem, so O of n is not a very good uh, efficient uh, way to solve this problem. Now how do we uh, solve this? I mean we have to achieve O of 1. So that should be our ideal case, right? We should be able to solve this problem using O of 1. And that is actually possible. There is another approach. Consider if we know the index, if you know the array index of the employee that we are looking for. Say for example, if you are looking for the employee Lisa, the input to our problem is Lisa. And we also know that the Lisa sits in the array index at 2. The index of the employee Lisa in the array is 2. If we know that, then we can actually do something like this. We will do something like array of index. We will pass the index into the array and then we will get the employee details immediately. There is no need to iterate through the employee no need to compare each employee name with the input. There is no need for that, right? Because we know the index of the employee, so you can directly go ahead and do the indexing on the array. And that will give you O of 1 time complexity, which, which is very efficient, and that's what we are actually looking for. And to explain this behavior in a very simple way, consider your friend is actually visiting you uh, in your city. And your friend is actually staying in one of the hotels in the city, and you want to meet your friend in that hotel and that hotel might contain more than 300 rooms, right? Now, how will you find your friend in that hotel? Uh, you will go to the hotel and one approach is that you can go to the hotel and you can knock every room in the hotel and you can check whether your friend is in there or not. And that's uh, going to be a very inefficient process, right? And it's a, also a very weird way to find someone in the hotel. So never try that in reality. And But, but instead, what exactly you have to do? You will just call your friend get the room number, you will ask which room you are staying. You, once you know the room number, then you go to the hotel, you go exactly to that particular room and meet your friend, right? You don't have to knock every room in the hotel. So that's exactly what we are doing here. We are not going to iterate through each and every employee in the array. Instead, we know the index already, so we are just going to directly uh, pass the index into the array and get the employee name. By doing that, we get the time complexity of O of 1 uh, which is exactly what we are looking for, which is great. Now the problem is, there is no way we know the index of the employee. Because as I already told you, uh, the requirement is you will be given the employee name and you need to find the employee details out of it. There, we, there is no way that we know the index of the employee name. And it's not a, uh, uh, not possible also, right? Because index is a, not a constant factor. So every day there will be multiple employees added into the array and some employees might be removed from the array, so the index keeps changing. So index is not a constant factor and you don't know that at all. So how do we solve this problem? So unless we have a way to relate the employee name 
with the array index somehow. So once you are given the employee name, you should be able to derive the array index from the employee name. If we can do that, then we can achieve the O of 1. Then we can do the array index indirectly. So this is where hashing comes into picture. So how do we relate the employee name with the array index, right? So basically what is hashing? So the primary component of hashing is hash function. So hash function is nothing but it actually accepts an input. Uh, it actually accepts some object as an input. And then it produces a numerical output as a result. So you pass something into the hash function and then it produces a numerical output numerical uh, number as an output. So basically this is just a simple example that I am telling you but some advanced hash functions are available which even can produce non-numerical hash code as well. But just for our example purpose and explanation purpose just keep it simple. We are going to pass a simple object into the hash function and consider that will produce a numerical hash code. If that is possible then definitely we can achieve this O of 1 right. So let's see how we can achieve hashing in our example. In this example, now I am going to use length as the hash function. So which means uh, based on the result from the length function, I am going to index the employees into the array accordingly. Say for example, uh, the employee team uh, has three number of characters in the employee name. So the length of the employee name is three. So I am going to index team in the third index in the array. So similarly, Lisa has four number of characters. So I am going to insert Lisa in the fourth index in the array. So I'm going to use a very simple hash function, which is length, right? So now by doing this, I can associate the employee name with the index of the array. So now coming back to our initial problem, you will be given the employee name and you need to find the employee details from the array. So how will you do that? You will get the employee name and first you need to find the number of characters in the employee name and then you do the array of index. So you just pass the length as the index into the array and then you will get the employee and you will find the employee details. So we still achieve the time complexity of O of 1 with the employee name as the input. We solve the problem, right? Now there are some issues in this approach. Let's talk about that. Now one of the problem is, if you look at the array, our array size gets bigger, right? So even though our number of employees are very lesser, the number of employees is just 3, but we still need an array with size of 5. Uh, because some of the employees has more number of characters. So for example, the employee named Steve has five characters in the name. So we need to put that employee in the fifth index in the array. And imagine some employee might have 20 characters in the name and we need to insert that employee in the 20th index in the array. So in that case, we even need a, we need an even more bigger array, right? So we might have solved the time complexity problem, but we didn't solve the space complexity problem. Now, how do we solve that problem? So we can solve it using another approach. So uh, we can actually solve it using the modulo operator. So we have to change our hash function a little bit. So instead of just saying length, I'm going to do length modulo number of employees. So with this hash function, you don't need to increase the array size. We can just limit putting all the employees into a very limited array. So let's take a, uh, let's take the employee Steve. So Steve has five number of characters. So let's apply the hash function to the employee Steve. Uh, so what you actually do is first calculate the length of the employee name, which is five, and then five modulo total number of employees, which is four. So five modulo four is one. So you insert Steve into the first index in the array. So by doing this, you don't need a large uh, array size. So you can actually uh, limit your uh, size of the array. So we solve the space complexity somehow, right? Now, there are some other issues in this approach, which is sometimes the hash function could produce same value uh, for different employees. Because uh, obviously, there is a lot of possibility that two or more employees can have same number of characters in the employee name, right? So if two employees have five number of characters, then obviously our hash function is going to return the same hash code. And we end up inserting the employees into the same index in the array. So that's another issue that we have to face. And this is a normal occurrence in hashing uh, technique. And this, is, this phenomenon is what we call as collision. So the more advanced your hash function is, the less number of collisions would happen. 
So length is a very primitive uh, hash function that I'm using it here. Uh, so that's why you will definitely face a lot of collisions. But if you use an advanced hash algorithm, the number of collisions will also become reduced. An ideal hash function will not have any collisions at all. And you know, there are some, um, uh, the C sharp have some built-in data structures and the Java also have some built-in data structures using hashing. Say Java has hash table and C sharp has dictionary. And these data structures also internally implemented using this approach. Uh, they might not have used length as a hash function. They might have used some advanced algorithms. Mostly they might have used something like ASCII, finding the ASCII of the character, something like that. Uh, but yeah, but definitely they might not use length as a hash function. So I'm using length just for explanatory purpose. Don't use that anywhere in the uh, real time. Now there are some other advanced hash algorithms also available like uh, MD5, uh, SHA-1, uh, SHA-2. So those hash algorithms are more powerful and they might reduce the number of collisions uh, actually. And even in case if you face collisions, there are approaches to solve those collisions. Uh, but in this video, I'm not going to talk about how to solve collision in hashing, but I gave, I gave some reference articles in the video description so that you can go ahead and explore the, those techniques as well. And initially I told you there are some other benefits also in the hashing apart from just increasing the efficiency of the search operation, right? So we are going to talk about those benefits as well. So apart from uh, improving the efficiency of a search algorithm, hashing can also use to, uh, use to identify the uniqueness of a particular object. Uh, so it helps to uniquely identify an object. Say for example, you have two files and you want to compare these two files and you want to check whether these two files are same or not. And each file might be containing some more than thousand number of lines and it's not practical to go through all those lines and compare the files and check, right? That, that's not practical. So here you can actually use hashing. So what you actually do use, do is you just uh, create a hash code out of one file, create a hash code out of the other file and then compare the hash code. If both hash code are same, then probably the file content is also same. If not, then the file content is different. So that's a very powerful way to compare the files compare the objects, right? And you can also use the same technique to check the integrity of any files. Say for example, if you're downloading a file from the internet, and I'm sure most of the times when you try to download a file from the internet, you might have seen a SHA file associated to the file that you are trying to download. And the SHA file is nothing but the hash code of the actual file that you are trying to download. So once you download the file, you actually produce another SHA for that file, and then you compare that SHA with the SHA available in the internet. If both SHA are same, then you actually download the correct file. If it is different, then your file might have corrupted during the download process. Some of the packets might be dropped during the download process. And you can actually use this technique to uh, check that. So till now, uh, we talked about how uh, hashing helps you in a different ways and how hashing helps you in increasing the efficiency of the search algorithm and what are the different benefits of hashing. And I really hope this video is useful to you. Thanks a lot for watching. Audio jungle.